Howdy. That's how we roll here in the South. We say howdy. My name is Perry Noble. I'm the pastor of New Spring Church in Anderson, Greenville, Florence. We have a lot of locations in the state of South Carolina where the tea is sweet like God intended for it to be. I'm so honored to be speaking at the nines, which is really the sixes because I only have six minutes, but I guess they didn't want to rebrand it and six is kind of an evil number. So I'm really honored to be speaking at the nines today. And I just wanted to start out by asking you this question. As a leader, have you ever wanted to quit? I'm not talking about like, have you ever wanted to get away on a vacation? I'm talking about, have you ever wanted to quit? I'm talking like you begin to dream about moving to South Dakota and if you are in South Dakota, um, both of you, uh, just, just be patient with me. You begin to dream about moving to South Dakota and maybe finding a Home Depot there where you can stack lumber and you don't have to talk to anybody. You just flat out want to quit because it gets hard. Let's face it. What we do, there's a spiritual element to it. There's a physical element. There's an emotional element. And there's just some days where it really does get hard and the tougher it gets the more tempted we are to quit i mean everybody faced tough times in 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 the scriptures jesus after his first sermon in the gospel of luke they take him to the cliff to throw him off i don't think any of us have preached one that bad i'm just saying we face tough times i remember when we first started new spring church we were meeting in a living room with about 15 people and the guy that gave 65 percent of the budget walked before we ever had the first service I've been told that it takes about two years, and after about two years, you lose about half your core group. It took me three months, and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what have I gotten into? There are just times where we are tempted to quit. Um, But God showed me something really cool recently. In the book of Daniel, most of us know this story. We grew up in church with it, or you've taught it, Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, and they go, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, he has this ego thing, he builds this really high monument to himself, and he says, you need to bow before it, and they played all these music things with the zither and the harp, and the, by the way, I think we probably need more zithers in our worship services today. Anyway, so they, they had this thing, and they played all the music, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow. And then King Nebuchadnezzar brought them you know, before him and said, hey, is it true you didn't bow? Because these guys were kind of important in the kingdom. And they were like, no, we, we didn't bow at all. Um, and he said, well, I'm going to give you another shot. And they were like, well, King, that, that's fine. You can give us another shot. But we're, we're still not going to bow. Now, Sunday school teaches us at this point that everything goes well. Like, I, I don't know if you've heard people say, well, every day I've met Jesus, it's just gotten sweeter and sweeter. And I'm like, well, you've probably only been following him for two days because things get rough. Read the writings of Paul. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get in this situation where they, did, they didn't bow or they didn't bend under the pressure. And the Bible says this in Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. It's really interesting. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. They did the right thing. Three leaders who did the right thing, and instead of getting freedom, they got a furnace. They got thrown into a fire that was ordered seven times hotter hotter than normal sometimes when we lead we don't get to see the good before we walk we we do get to see the good but we have to walk through the bad they got seven times hotter and they're thrown into the fire but here's what's so awesome about that when they got in the fire they saw jesus so much clearer than they had ever seen him before and many times the reason that god takes us through the fire, is not to punish us, but to show us who he is and the fact that he will walk through us through whatever we face. Because, I I love it, Nebuchadnezzar sees him and goes, oh my gosh, that's so crazy, come out, and they calls them out. I love the fact that three men went in, Nebuchadnezzar saw four men in the fire, three men came out, where's Jesus? He's still in the fire waiting on me and you. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. He doesn't say if you walk through the fire. He says when you walk through the fire. As leaders, we are called to walk through the fire. We are called to experience tough times. But it's in those times we get a clearer picture of Jesus than we've ever had. And I love the fact that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not punished, but promoted to a position of prominence because they saw who Jesus was. So if you're walking through a fire, open your eyes. You're about to see Jesus clearer than you've ever seen him before. Don't quit. Don't ever give up on a God who's never given up on you. He's still real. He's still faithful. He's still got a great plan for your life. And your best days are yet to come if you'll just keep your eyes on him.